to the adventure and put my on W four C Y Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... Uh, Rickshaw Billy's Burger Patrol. You know, I gotta love that name. It is a mouthful, too, just like a burger. You thought Corn <laughs> was a dumb band name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So, uh, you should... It, since you said that, you should go, like, out on tour with Corn. Ah, uh, that would be... <laughs> that would be insane. Yeah, uh... They are they're they always play the Danny Wimmer festivals that I do and man they're always badass live. I don't even care if you like them, they're badass. I don't, live. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't, I don't know. I know it was like fun to make fun of new metal for a long time, but that shit is all so good. You know what? And they hate that. Okay, like it, well they did in the beginning. They oh, hated like the moniker of like new metal. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I they, get that. They thought it was stupid as shit. Now they're like whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but. Back then, it was like, you know, they they hated that people called them that. They didn't call mm. themselves that. Right. Yeah. I don't know who coined that term. Uh, I don't know yeah. either. Or Maybe it, it had to do with, okay, because I'm a metalhead from going back to, like, I was at the first Metallica show ever, the first Slayer show ever. Hell yeah. And then, like, grunge killed us. Yeah. And then metal came back, so maybe that's why they went, new, new metal. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's dumb. <laughs> but... Hey, dumb metal. Great music. Yeah, not not Incredible dumb music. music. No. Just a dumb genre name. Yeah, yes. But I hate genre names anyway. They're which, pretty silly. Yeah. Which that brings me to what I like to ask the artists. Okay, so instead of the stupid genres, because there's so many subgenres, micro genres, and stupid shit like that, how do you, as the artist, describe your music? Not as a genre, just how you describe it. Um, it's like. I don't know. Sometimes we say like party metal, but it's not that either because I think a lot of people assume like Andrew WK or some like more like knucklehead shit, which I guess like it kind of we kind of are that. We are knuckleheads. But like the lyri- <laughs> the lyrical content is pretty extreme and grotesque at times, but it's all about being relatable to the fan base and having that those like sing along moments and everybody just like starting a pit and having fun and it's like not a it's not a it's aggressive sounding but like it's uh it's just fun and, and more inviting than i think a lot of people would assume about like a metal band like I, I i we're heavy we're a metal band but like also people are like you're not really a metal band or people are like i don't even like heavy stuff but i like you guys and it's like so i don't really know like we kind of like to say like doom wop so it's like it's like dancey like doo music but just tune down to guitars and heavier like just groove so that's that's i guess what we call ourselves but um yeah that's a cool way to put it, doom wop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love it. You know, and it's funny you mentioned Andrew WK because, yeah, you, you know, like when you interview him, all he talks about is party, 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 right. party. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, I'm. It's what is it? Five o'clock, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. We're, it's definitely not like maybe from the outside perspective, it seems like that, but it's 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 work. It's our it's our full-time jobs so you know there's only so much time in the day so i do have to ask i never talk about band names Mm -hmm. but in a day where everything's like shorter and shorter you guys went the opposite direction how did that come about it was not by design and by complete accident um when i had started writing songs for this project um the name just kind of came to me out of nowhere and i wrote it down on a post-it note and then we started playing shows and the name just kind of stuck so it was more just like I wanted something to release it under and um, I guess just got lucky with the branding opportunity with the word burger in it to have, you know, the goofy merch that we have. And um, 
we're able to do a lot of stuff um, like locally and even I guess well that New Orleans show like with the burger a lot of a lot of food pop-ups will do stuff with us which is cool so it's kind of a lot of cool crossover shit that we're um, that we're lucky to be able to do that I think a lot of metal bands don't get to do but um, yeah I mean the name is, is complete bullshit and it still is and it doesn't mean <laughs> anything it just was um, yeah we have the it's any any iteration of those words you can find us it's just a matter of remembering the whole sequence but you don't have to well call us rickshaw you can call us rbbp you can call me surely i don't give a fuck (laughs) and what's cool is okay your your link tree or whatever it is Mm -hmm. i don't i when i went to it i'm like how did they get that username burger links like i would think mcdonald's would get that You know, oh, I was the like, link. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that was me or if that was maybe our manager that just grabbed that. But um, again, too, like the name being so just like off the fucking cuff, like doesn't make <laughs> any sense that like we could get all our websites and every like, like no one's taking the names like, the, you know, the LSE or the the the. Um, yeah, like it's all just there. <laughs> like I know. So. I just thought, wow, that's pretty cool. They got that. Like, that's the perfect link right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just go to so, Burger Links. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. I, and I am glad that you don't do stupid shit. Like, okay, like, I could see other bands with that band name, like, getting up on stage and dressing up as burgers. And yeah. I'm glad you don't do that. We don't really like to yeah. into that. No, so that's, <laughs> we did, like, the very first show we did, we had someone grill burgers on the side of the stage. It was now, like a pool that's party. cool. And even then, it felt like, ah, oh, this is, we've leaned in too hard on this. Well, so. I'll tell you where it would be good. Okay, so, like, I do the uh, dime bag barbecue, you know, and, you know, um, but uh, Dave Grohl does the barbecue. He loves the barbecue. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's really good at it. Master, yeah. So, that would be cool if you had Dave Grohl yes, doing if, that. Yes, if there's a lead on that, you can call us and we will yeah. Except that. We'll yeah, take right? that 100%. <laughs> so, what was that moment in life where you're like, damn, this is what I need to do for the rest of my life? I mean, I'd say for me, specifically with this band, is after we got back from our first tour, and I got home, and I slept for a few hours, and I woke up, and I was like, when do we leave again? <laughs> like I like uh, that after that I was just like okay like nice this is what I'm I'm into this now like and how about you I grew up playing music and just being around it so I was always obsessed with it and when I got my first guitar everything else very quickly fell by the wayside um and started playing in bands like after I was like in college um so I think I knew it was the only thing I'd ever known or like obsessed over to such a high degree. Um, and I was kind of willing to do whatever it took to make it happen in, in whatever capacity. Um, yeah. So I think I just, you recognize you have like a, a gift or a skill set or something that you work really hard towards. And there was not ever even close to another option. Uh, See, for and it. that's usually the case with musician I find. And I love the word obsessed. Because how can you be a great musician if you're not obsessed being... Like, it ain't the kind of yeah. business like you're like, oh, I'm going to do this so I can make a living. You do it because you're obsessed with yeah. music. Yeah, you have to live and breathe it 24-7 with all the other back-end stuff that goes into it and the business side of, of it. It's like you, you can't turn it off and you shouldn't want to turn it off either. You have to no be doubt. obsessed. I still just... I love electricity and distortion and it it just takes over everything and there's not another option i like that you use distortion because i love distortion it's always what pisses everybody off that gets in my car <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah no it's supposed to sound like this yeah exactly that's <laughs> just a big like crushing wall of comfort <laughs> so i play i played drums i played guitar i sang thrash metal i sucked at all three but <laughs> but the point of that is was when i was playing guitar I would make up like these sounds that would pr- probably annoy the fuck out of everybody else. And it definitely annoyed my dad. He's like, the hell is that? You better yeah, go yeah. get a real job. Noise pollution. You suck at that. <laughs> and, and like, I did suck, but he didn't it's get. Not about that. It's not even... No, he didn't get what I was doing there because, you know, he's from the Frank Sinatra days. Yeah, like, yeah. It, well, I love like, Frank. Yeah. yeah, Frank's good. 
But he doesn't use distortion or yeah. feedback. Or, it's just like, okay, so the night before I came here to cover this, uh, I, I live in Florida. I was covering a show back home. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Susie Moon, and she's a punk rock chick. She's okay. really, really good. And she's on tour with Angel Orange. Oh, sick. Okay. And so basically, d- at the end of each song, as punk has, feedback. Uh, yeah. And I'm like sitting there, like most people would be like, oh, they need to learn, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and I'm like yeah. sitting there going, that's badass. That's, yeah, that's, that's the part best of the part of the show right there. Yeah, I think watching like, you know, early footage of Husker Du and like Dinosaur Jr. was just like, uh, it was just this noise that uh, just swallowed everything around it. And it's like, how can you not be... Or even like Pete Townsend, you know, watch yeah. as a kid watching like live at Leeds and like, oh, that's how you're supposed to do that. And, you know, that's that was the ultimate example of totally. Of, yeah. Just like, yeah. So what would you say each one of you? What show did you go to before doing shows yourself that had the biggest impact on you? I guess the first like proper like large show I went to was rush. Um, wow. and that was just, I, I again to, to be so in love with them for so long, but I never ever tried to emulate or like copy that at all. Right. But then to see that live and it was so perfect. It, I, I mean, everything was, yeah, I just remember it being like, uh, I'd never heard anything live that sounded just like the record and to just be the three of them. And, uh, it was just so much sound. Uh, and that was like that really knocked me out. Nice. Yeah. How about you? He's been thinking about this. Yeah. I saw him the minute I asked the question. His eyes went up, yeah. and he's looking in the in the brain of all those co- shows he went to. Yeah. Which one would it be? <laughs> uh, I mean, my first proper show was Ozfest 2004, 2005. Nice. Um, which was original Black Sabbath lineup, Iron Maiden. Um, Mastodon when they were just getting started off there for off remission um, Black Label Society As LA Dying um, In Flames so like that was like the first like whoa because like, it was a, at the an outdoor amphitheater with two stages and so that was like when I was starting to like be like a real hardcore metal head kid like in high school growing my hair out and all that kind of shit so I was like that was like ninth grade maybe and then I'd say probably the most religious experience is going to see Meshuggah play live. Wow. Which yeah. I saw them play. The last time I saw them play, I think, was with Animals as Leaders opening up for them before they exploded. And that was wild. But yeah, I mean, watching the how calculated and mathematical Meshuggah is and the, the lighting and like just that whole, like I'm a huge Meshuggah fan. Um, so that's probably my... They are pretty technical. Yeah, it's and it's it's funny, like, uh, I listen to a lot of like Bill Burr, like com- the comedian Bill Burr, and um, he's a drummer and like is just like talking about going to see my sugar shows and trying to explain it, but he can't even explain it. But he's like, but like, um, who's the drummer from Tool? Oh. He's like, Danny Carey's right next to me, like laughing and being like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's like, the best drummers in the world are just standing watching Thomas Hawker like do his thing. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyways, your And my favorite drummer of all time ever is Dave Lombardo. Okay, oh, Dave's, Dave's saw, great. Uh, I saw Testament uh, with Exodus and Death Angel on this last run. The like was it the Bay Strikes Back, and DiGiorgio was back in the band. Chuck Billy on vocals, and then fucking Lombardo playing drums. And that was Lombardo's just like, in Testament now. He's in the original yeah. Misfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's picking up those gigs, and that was like, yeah, like Bay Area royalty. That was insane to get to see. So yeah. Um, I always have a hard time with this one because I didn't go to a lot of like really big concerts growing up. Like it would. We'd go. Leo and I grew up in Boston, so we'd go to like the local stuff. But I didn't wasn't as great with the big stuff. Seeing ACDC at the Tweeter Center on my 18th birthday that was that's definitely cool. huge. And then I always do like to mention my first concert ever: Huey Lewis in the News, <laughs> Cape Cod Melody Tent, 1998. Lovely experience. <laughs> nice. Um, no, but the the ACDC one was wild because it's just you see an ACDC and they sound so good. I'm like. And then other than that, I mean, seeing King Crimson a couple years ago was ridiculous. See, I love hearing this stuff because of the progression. Like, for me, the first concert I ever went to, I don't even consider it the first concert because it wasn't really them, but it was 
1978 or 79 Beatlemania at Madison Square Garden. But then after that, 79, it was Journey and Loverboy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I stepped it up a notch. And then I was going to the... Then I got into the metal stuff. Yeah. Um, I went to every Ozfest there ever was. I've seen Ozzy every year since 1980. I had Blizzard of Oz on 8-track. Hell yeah. And then... The one that changed my life, believe it or not, was 1980, I moved out to California, and I hung out at the Sunset Strip. Now, as you know, that was the height of the start of the whole Sunset Strip era, yeah. and I lived it all. And the first club show I ever went to, I was like, I'm never going to a real concert ever again. <laughs> it was at the Roxy and it was Motley Crue before they had an album when they weren't glam yet. Yep. They were like horror punk. Yep. And they were trying to burn the Roxy down to bring <laughs> yeah, yeah. Satan in. And I was like, whoa. That's nuts. And yeah. then, you know, mentioned the Bay Area. So then once Slayer and Metallica left LA and left us with all the hair metal glam shit, me and my bro used to hitchhike up to the Bay Area from L.A. to go to the real shows. And that's when... Hell yeah. That's when I was like, now this is what... Because I'm a total thrash metal head. Oh, all of it. All of it was insane. Those shows... Like, I've been to some insane shows, but the Bay Area thrash shows oh, in the wow. beginning... Like, you're lucky to be alive getting out of those shows. <laughs> So, yeah, I like to hear where it comes from and how it progresses because, like, you know, you do have a progression, especially, you know, as music progresses. Like, I look at metal now and it's like, we could have never imagined this. Me and my best bro, we were going to, we were driving up to Aftershock because I covered that festival and, uh, and uh, we were playing something and he goes, man, I thought this was faster when we were growing up. <laughs> And I'm like, well, because that's the fastest there was then. Yeah. Yep. You know, but I'm like, here, let me play you something from now. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's more like it. But we didn't have anything like that then. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's what's cool now. You know, and, and it's cool that you guys can sit here and play at Shaky Knees because that wouldn't happen back then. No. Yeah. You know, as soon as Motley Crue became glam. Like, my friends were like, you got to burn all that Motley Crue shit. Yeah, Fuck yeah. that. You couldn't yeah. like anything. You couldn't go to a punk show as a long hair. You couldn't go to a metal show as a punk. Got your ass beat. Yeah. So I, I thought it was stupid always. You know? We well, should all just be together. It's all I, music. I think that we've always been super welcoming to anyone who wants to listen to our music or come to our shows. And I think that's become very reciprocal in that, like, we get welcomed and invited to a lot of different places now and get to do a lot of really, really fun shit. <laughs> like, Yeah, see? It should just be... It's just we're just all music, yeah. you know? And that's it. Like, we're it, just all trying to have a good time. No like, doubt. 100%. So what you guys got going on after this? Um, So we're touring for the... We'll be on the road for the next 11 days, going out to the East Coast, and then we're basically out two and a half weeks home, two and a half weeks out, two and a half weeks all summer. Uh, we'll be tracking our record early July before we head out um, and then just be grinding on that, doing the music videos and then hopefully out on the road again in the fall, staying busy. Cool. Traveling. Cool. And uh, how do people connect to you guys on socials, on the web, buy your merch because that's most important. Yep. Okay. I say this all the time because I don't think listeners realize that that's the only way you guys can make it to the next gig, yeah, yeah. much yep. less be a band just make <laughs> yeah. it to the next gig yep but yeah and our merch store is on our website it's just rickshawbillysburgerpatrol.com we're on instagram rickshawbilly and the boys um spotify you know all the all your streamings rickshawbillys burger patrol usually pops up by the time you get through rickshaw like nice and you do. You guys do have some cool ass merch. Oh, so thank you. everybody's got to go you. check that out and buy some merch. Because I checked it out. I'm like, that's some cool ass merch. Thank you. you know, some people, some bands, they have like unique good merch. Some have the same as everybody else. You guys got that unique no, cool it's, merch it's, that people have to have. It's the lifeblood of the whole. Like you have to have when you travel. You have to have good merch. Yeah. It's just, absolutely. I want to wear a dope t-shirt. Yeah. So I will <laughs> dope t-shirts there you go so then eventually we're all just selling dope t-shirts exactly exactly 
So is there anything we haven't talked about that the listeners need to know about you guys? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're, like I said, you know, we're going to be on the road all summer. We've got a new record coming out by the end of the year. Um, we've got a couple of presses of vinyl coming out over nice. the next couple of months. It should be cool. Um, yeah, that's a, I think that about covers it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, you guys rock. Thank I'm glad you. you're here at Shaky Knees, and uh, thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Thank Man. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. You got it. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.